We're in London again at Lydown Park, and we're calling it that because we don't know where we are or what this building is, but quite a lot of people like this park. It's a gorgeous day, and we are conveniently right next to, there it is, the Tower of London and the London Shard. Two towers. Beth's here. We're gonna check out the Tower of London first. Tower of London, we're actually in between two defensive walls. The inner wall behind you there is almost 50 feet high, the outer wall behind me in places almost 40 feet thick. Now the area that you're now standing in now is known as Water Lane. It is called Water Lane because up until the year 1275 the waters of the River Thames washed right up against the wall behind you. It was in that year that the river was pushed back and the outer wall finally constructed. Now directly behind me here, ladies and gentlemen, down inside the basin, we have the world famous, or should I say the infamous, Traitor's Gate, built during the reign of King Edward I. Now it wasn't always called Traitor's Gate, it used to be called the Water Gate. The purpose of the Water Gate was to allow the safe conduct of provisions and prisoners into the tower via the river, rather than using the unsafe roads around London, which are often inhabited by rogues and vagabonds. They steal the provisions, more often than not, they would just set the prisoners free. Four queens of England were to enter their tower via Traitor's Gate. Queen Anne Boleyn, Queen Catherine Howard, Lady Jane Grey and the young Princess Elizabeth. Of the four of them, three of them are still here, buried within the confines of the tower. They were never given the option to leave. Now above Traitor's Gate we have St Thomas's Tower, also built during the same period. It is called St Thomas's Tower because it's named after St Thomas of Becket, the Archbishop of Canterbury, who was murdered in Canterbury Cathedral on the orders of King Henry II. Now inside... Now because the young Edward was deemed too young to rule the country, they were put under the care and protection of their uncle, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, who had the boys brought here to the tower for their own protection. But as soon as they were here, he had the boys declared illegitimate. And with the boys out of the way, funnily enough, that made Uncle Richard the first in line for the throne. And he was soon crowned King Richard III. Now shortly after his coronation, the boys disappeared. They were never seen alive again. Richard died fighting a few years later at the Battle of Bosworth Field in the year 1485. And shortly after the battle, some men came forward and they actually admitted to murdering the boys whilst they slept in a bedchamber behind that top window. Now they said they smothered the boys in their sleep, they had bundled the, the young bodies down the staircase and covered them over with a pile of stones. The next day, an unknown priest came. He took the bodies away. He buried them underneath the staircase inside the White Tower. There they lay, undiscovered, for 191 years until some workmen working on the staircase uncovered a box. They probably thought they'd found hidden treasure. You can imagine their horror and dismay as they opened the box to find the bones of two young children. Experts at the time immediately declared these must be the bones of the two boy princes. So they were placed in an urn that was designed by Sir Christopher Wren. They were then taken to Westminster Abbey where their young remains were reinterred into Innocent's Corner. That is where, ladies and gentlemen, they still lay to this day. because believe it or not, it belongs to the Queen. Built on the orders of King Henry VIII as a wedding present for Anne Boleyn. Sadly though, Anne never got to live there because by the time it was finished, so was she. She had been tried and condemned on various crimes such as adultery, witchcraft and incest. But so scared was she of the blocking axe that she asked to be executed in the French manner with a two-handed sword. We even brought the executioner across from Calais in France. Now on the day of her execution, as Anne knelt down over there to say her final prayers, 
the executioner quietly and gently took the sword out from underneath a pile of straw where it had been hidden. And with one swift blow, he took her head clean off. Now, so swift and so precise was the blow that he struck that it was said as the executioner lifted Anne's head for the crowd to see. Her eyes were still staring around at the crowd and her lips were still moving in prayer. You've gone really quiet. <laughs> right, I think I've traumatised you enough with executions for one day. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this line for the crown jewels. And then it just disappears down that way. 25 minute wait. All right, we can do it. Scratchings done by prisoners. It's fantastic. Your kind of prisoner? Wine. <laughs> There's some graffiti here that wasn't original. <laughs> this is original, done by prisoners, held here for various crimes. This was done by a little chap. This is the kind of view I want. This is my bedroom. Right. Tower Bridge, White Tower, Crown Jewel Towers. Beautiful. <coughs> so we're gonna try and find number 16. Grief is overcome by patience. I rather like that. Oh, Beth's found him. Okay. Interesting. Oh, look, you can see yourselves. Wave to yourselves. Good job. Into White Tower, which is next to Tower Bridge, which is near the London Shard Tower. Lots of towers. I can't really tell very well, but that goes down. It's not reflected in the water either. Those lights are at the very bottom, so it's like this distance doubled as the bottom where the bottom of the moat would be. It's scary. One of the tower ravens. There's six of them, and they guard more or less the tower. Then in the Second World War, the tower got bombed and two of the ravens died. Right. So they decided to replace them and get an extra one for good luck. Because unless there are six ravens protecting the Tower of London, Britain will come to an end and its empire will be destroyed. It's the legend. I know we've already seen this view, I know that, but can we just admire Tower Bridge, London Town Hall, Thumbs up for 
Scarlet. Scarlet. Enter Act 3. 